thank you for giving us this opportunity to share with you our CVIF DLP practice for the Special Education Department of Escuela de Nuestra Señora de La Salet, otherwise known as La Salet School in the Gupan City, Pangasinan. But before anything else, let me give you a brief background of our school. La Salet School was established in 1989 by Dr. Lina Galvan Tan and Mr. William Tan, starting out with a handful of students from preschool to grade six. It then expanded and opened its doors to the high school level the following year and in 1992 to students with special needs. We became a La Salian School Supervision Office supervised school from the year 2000 to our graduation in 2018. And we started implementing the CVIF DLP in the year 2013. Last year, we celebrated our 30th founding anniversary as an educational institution. In these 30 years, majority of our existence was rooted in being a traditional school. However, we pride ourselves in the fact that we are the first school in Pangasinan to offer special education and the first school again to implement the CVIF DLP methodology in all grade levels, including in our special education department. To be clear, there are two types of special education, one for the gifted and the other one for children with special needs. Our school focuses on the second category and we have students with autism, ADHD, cerebral palsy, learning disability, deaf, hearing impairment, and others. The important question here now is, how do we implement the CVIF DLP in our special education program? I would like to start with our philosophy. In La Salette School, we see our special kids as different. Do you see that red ball on the screen? That is a special child. They are different, but not less. They have what others call and diagnose a disability. But for us, it is not a disability but a different ability. It is for this reason that our SPED students who are mainstreamed in the regular classes answer the same learning activity sheets, follow the same schedules with minimal accommodations and modifications without the aid of a shadow teacher. Let me repeat that, without the aid of a shadow teacher. For our students who are still unable to be mainstreamed, I would like to discuss how we go about it using the four non-negotiable components of this methodology. First, we have the parallel learning groups. For regular classes, there is one expert teacher who handles two to three classes simultaneously to promote independent learning. Unlike the regular classes though, we cannot just assign any facilitator because of the children's behavioral and emotional disposition and the SPED teacher's specialized skill to handle the case. We are, however, able to implement this by assigning one SPED teacher to two to three manageable SPED students whose abilities may be different but complement each other. We call these dyads or triads. In this case, the teacher first demonstrates to student one the task on hand. When student number one is able to follow the instructions and do the task, the teacher now moves on to student number two to do the same thing. Student number one is then given enough space and time to do the task independently with the teacher still 
within the safe zone of monitoring the students but not necessarily meddling on how the task should be accomplished. She then moves on to student number three and does the same thing. In this setup, the students are given their own individualized activities, enough opportunity, meaning the time and the space that they need to do the task independently. That's learning by doing. And number three, the opportunity to socialize and learn from each other during group time. The teacher is also able to assist and journey with the group without being too overbearing while sticking to each child's individualized program. The second component is the activity-based domain learning. One of my all-time favorite quotes from Dr. Chris and Dr. Marvik is the line that goes, it's habit forming. Even the smell of the paper sends signal to the brain that it is working time. This daily protocol that they refer to in answering LAS is an integral part on how we establish routines for our students, most especially those with autism. There are three important aspects in handling children with autism. First, we need a stable environment. Second, we need a consistent routine. And third, we need small, achievable goals. This third aspect, the small achievable goals, is also in perfect alignment to the rule in making LAS that complex tasks and lessons are to be divided into small steps or several sub-lessons. In special education, we call the breakdown of complex, complex tasks into small achievable steps as task analysis. We do this for functional life skills as well as learning activity sheets. As you see here, we have some of the learning activity sheets of our special education students. The third component is the in-school comprehensive portfolio. We have no homeworks. The students do everything in school and we compile their works in a report called the progress report and we give it to the parents at the end of the school year. We even include pictures of the activities that the students did in this report. The last one is their strategic study and rest period. We also have this on Wednesdays, but we call it the Multiple Intelligence Social Formation Program. During this day, our kids have water therapy or art or music therapy, we also have one group that cooks together, merienda, and then they sell it to our teachers or to our parents. In fact, because of this, they were able to save enough money with the income that they made, and without asking for money from their parents, they were able to open their own bank accounts in China Bank, in China Savings Bank. This is actually a feature of our students in China Bank's magazine. Because of our belief that our SPED students did not have disabilities, but just different abilities than those that we regularly see, we were able to seamlessly implement the components of the CVIFDLP into our SPED program. But just when we thought that everything was going smoothly already, then came the pandemic and the news that there will be no face-to-face -face classes this coming school year. The important question now is, is DLP still relevant? The answer is a big yes through online learning. We still retain the implementation of the four components. There can be parallel learning groups of two or three students in an online class using Zoom or Google Meet, the learning activity sheets can either be emailed to the parents or be picked up from the school on a weekly basis. We can still compile all these, whether online or the hard copy, so that we can come up with a comprehensive portfolio. 
the strategic study and rest period will be retained, but will focus on psychosocial activities that will help the students and their families adjust to the new normal. Now, since all this will be implemented on a new playground, the online system, the biggest consideration is that the school will have to work closely with the home for the benefit of the child. How? As teachers, we should practice what we preach. And remember, our preaching is always in achieving the 21st century skills. Then let us apply that to ourselves. Let us communicate closely with our parents so that we collaborate to come up with creative ways on how to make this online learning possible. Because even with the surefire CVIF methodology supporting us, let us not forget that it still takes a village to raise a child. So the CVIF DLP, the new normal? Definitely a yes. Thank you very much and God bless us all.